Aw oh, yeah, your friend Rivers back again with a new mini PC review. This one is a Windows 11 Pro PC running an AMD Ryzen 7. It's made by GMK Tech. The cool thing here is these are ultra compact, complete PCs, and this one is really fast. First, let's start by looking at the ports and hardware of this mini PC. Man, it's really good. It's running a Ryzen 7 with 4 cores and 8 threads, which means it should be plenty fast. It's also got onboard Radeon graphics, which means it's got video acceleration for things like watching 4K videos, a little video encoding, or some light gaming. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, which is upgradable, so if you wanted to add another module, you could. That's amazing for these little mini PCs. And on top of that, it's also got an NVMe SSD, which is also upgradable. I'm going to upgrade the SSD later in this video, so keep watching if you want to see if that improves the performance. You can run up to three monitors at once on this mini PC by using the two HDMI 2.0 ports and the USB-C port. All can go all the way up to 4K60. It comes with a fully licensed version of Windows 11 Pro, but you could also install Linux on here if you wanted to to get a little extra performance. And of course there's my favorite feature and the reason that I bought this, and that is that it's extremely compact and fast too. I wanted a small PC for my corner desk that looks clean and that I could possibly mount to the back of my monitor. This GMK Tech PC checked all those boxes. I'll be using it for web surfing, watching video, and some office work. And yes, I bought it myself. It was not free for me. So first up, I want to show you how I plan to mount this behind the monitor so that it has a clean all-in-one look like an iMac. To mount this PC, I found the perfect bracket that's actually for a router, but it's ideal for mini PCs and set-top boxes too. I'll add a link to the mount in the video description below. The only problem with this mount is it did not include the monitor screws. I'll include the measurements of the screws if you want to pick some up, and I'll leave a link to the screws as well. Anyways, this mount works great for this mini PC, but it would also work perfect for a Mac Mini or an Nvidia Shield. This bracket will work great for most set-top boxes out there. Next, I wanted to test how well dual monitors worked on the GMK, so I hooked up a second 4K monitor. These guys are both running at 60p, and I had no problems. It connected right up, auto-detected even. Since dual monitors work so smoothly, I thought I'd push it just a little bit harder. So I went ahead and opened up a 4K YouTube video on the right-hand side while navigating Windows and reading news sites on the left-hand side. That actually worked pretty well, and the video played smoothly. So I thought I'd push it even further and run two 4K streams, one on each side. And this test is where we reached the limit of this player. It was kind of choppy when you're playing two 4K streams. You could get it to work if you would pause one, get the other one up and playing, then unpause the other one, but you could tell it was really slowing down the player. Now if you wanted to do two streams, probably two 1080p streams would not be a problem, but really I've hardly ever wanted to watch two video streams at once anyways. So to give you a little bit better idea of the power of this player, let's go ahead and run a benchmark on here and then we can compare it to another system and see how it performs. Next I ran Geekbench, which is a cross-platform benchmarking app. You can benchmark phones, Macs, Windows, anything on here. We got a respectable 829 for single core and for multi-core we got 2869, which is not bad for a four core CPU. Now for comparison, I ran Geekbench on my Threadripper system that I'm editing this video on and I got 959 for single core and 1133.2 for multi-core. So you can see that the single core is actually really close, which tells me that this has got a pretty powerful processor in it. But of course the multi-core score on the Threadripper is much better and it's a much more expensive computer too. Next, I went ahead and disassembled the GMK Tech to see how upgradable it is, and it turns out it's very upgradable. It's got a 512 gig NVMe SSD, which is a very standard part, so you can easily replace it or upgrade it. And it's also got user replaceable memory and a free slot, so all you'd have to do is buy another 16 gigabyte module and you could have 32 gigs on here if you wanted. I also pulled the motherboard so we can get a look at the heatsink on here. And if you flip it over underneath all the copper heat pipes, it actually does a pretty good job of keeping it cool. GMK even included a serial ATA cable under the lid so that you can install an additional 2.5 inch SSD or a spinning drive. The drive would mount right up here underneath the cover and would give you a total of two drives. I was wondering what those screws in the box were for. Man, I like the extras that these guys include. So a lot of times these mini PCs will have slow hard drives and if you replace the hard drive with a newer, faster one, you'll like double your speed. So I want to try it on this one and see what happens. So I picked up a Hynix P31 SSD. I've used a few of these before and they are absolute screamers. I'd say they are even faster than the Samsung 980s. 
I don't know why, but it's not just about the transfer speeds. Maybe they have lower latency or something. For whatever reasons, these Hynix drives are extremely fast. I used Windows Computer Management to format the drive. From there, I used Paragon Disk Migration Software to clone the old drive with Windows 11 on it. Hynix gives you free disk cloning software as well that I would recommend if you don't already have something. I'll add a link to Hynix's software as well as the NVMe to USB-C kit I used in the description below as well. Once the cloning is done, shut down, switch out the old drive for the new drive, and before you reboot the computer, go into the BIOS by hitting delete right when it boots up, and you're gonna to wanna to change the boot order. Basically, the BIOS has to see your new drive, otherwise it won't boot. That's what happened to me the first time I tried to boot up. So now we wanna look at the SSD performance before and after the upgrade. The before score is already a very solid score of 2433 for sequential reads and 1746 for sequential writes. But look at the difference with the new faster drive. We're seeing a 34% increase in read speed and a 56% increase in write speeds. That means this PC is gonna be considerably faster for you and you could have more storage space with the new drive as well. Let's take a look at Geekbench again and see if this also bumped up the Geekbench scores. So even though Geekbench mainly tests CPU and memory, we can see that it did add about 12% to the single core score and about 3% to the multi-core score. So not bad at all. Next, let's take a look at the power consumption of this mini PC. So we hooked up my handy watt meter and we got anywhere between 6 watts and 22 watts depending on how busy the computer is. So roughly the same ballpark as a laptop. And finally, I'm gonna compare the GMK Tech to the M1 Mac Mini. I'll be using Chrome and I'll try to load pages that I haven't loaded before so as to avoid using cached data. So, so far we can see the Mac Mini loads a little bit quicker but they're both really fast. Actually, this YouTube channel was using cache data because I've went to that channel many times. Let's go ahead and try the next one. And again, Mac Mini is slightly faster, but both of them load a page within, I'd say, one second. So they're both really fast. And of course, the Mac Mini is going to be faster in certain things like video encoding. But then again, it costs twice as much too. Still, it stood its own pretty well in your day-to-day -day activities like web surfing. And finally, I want to sum up the GMK Tech with some pros and cons. First, the pros. It's really fast, especially for the price. It's got the compact form factor, which is one of the main reasons I got it. It's actually surprisingly upgradable. Uh, you can get up to three monitors on there, which is really nice to have. The NVMe SSD that's included is actually really good. A lot of these include uh, MMC hard drives, which are a lot slower. And you even get a copy of Windows 11 Pro, which is really nice to have for things like virtualization and a remote desktop. And now the cons. First, you can hear the fan when it's working hard. It's not loud, but you can hear it. Also, I'd really like to see a dedicated VESA mount with this. The one I got cost about $15, so it wasn't bad, but if they just include it in the box, that would be sweet. So for me, this was exactly what I was looking for, a small, fast, little mini PC that I could mount on the back of a monitor for a clean iMac looking look, or use it to run three monitors, and you've still got lots of extra USB ports for additional peripherals as well. It's great for when you just need to quickly look something up online or get some work done. I'll add links to the software and all the hardware I showed in the video in the description down below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and be sure and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching and as always, aloha.